Hey guys, Khali from Clicky Fanatics Magazine here, and I'm here today with a special guest. I'm here with Nadine the Clerk. You guys might have seen her playing for the Proteas, obviously, of course, in the World Cup, famously. <laughs> um, mind my nerves a bit because I'm a, it's my first Protea. I, I did Zubair Hamza, but uh, you know that means Zubair Hamza have like a very good relationship, etc. So it was easy to talk to him. But now, today I've got Nadine, um, big fan of yours, of course. And um, I've been following your progression, always talking to Claire, etc., about things. I'm talking to you now in a very difficult period. Obviously, the title says it, we are in lockdown at the moment in South Africa, and obviously with the coronavirus and everything. So let's just start by you giving some tips, maybe, about how you are coping with this whole coronavirus, etc., and staying indoors. <laughs> I think it's it's really tough, obviously, being a cricketer, you, you want to be in the nets as much as you can and you want to work on your skills and get better. Um, but it's something that we can't control at the end. Um, we always say control the controllables. And I think um, this is a really good time to work on your fitness. I know we as females, we love to lose weight. Um, we always have a problem with our weight. So I think for me, I've been working quite a bit on my fitness and uh, obviously my weight and stuff. So I think it's a really good time um, to focus on that and and. I think also from a mental side of it, to get away from cricket a little bit. We've obviously been away a really long time with the World Cup and the New Zealand Tour. Um, so to be back with family and stuff, I think it's really good for the mental side of it. Um, and I think it's been it's been really good so far. It's tough, but um, it's been really good. What sort of tips can you give? I mean, I've seen some of the girls doing like um, training in the backyard, of course, and Sometimes some kids or some, some children and some cricketers won't have big backyards to train in or to practice the cricket skills, especially. I know with wicket keepers throwing tennis balls against the wall and catching it, we saw some of the, your teammates do uh, your teammate doing that. Um, give some tips, maybe, first of all, from a fitness point of view, and then also as well, how to keep your cricket skills sharp during this period, being a batsman, being a bowler, etc. I think it's it's really difficult if you don't have if you don't have the space in the backyard. Um, I mean, some of us are lucky enough to have a, a small little space to do something. So, um, but I think even though you don't have the backyard, it it will be a bit difficult with cricket skills. I think, but um, I think from a fitness point of view, there's a lot of if you even if you go on the internet, there's a lot of um, body weight stuff you can do. You can work really a lot. You can you can strength yourself a lot and um, you can do a lot of running even if it's in the house even if it's 20 meter sprints or whatever but um, I think from a cricketing point of view it's very difficult I haven't touched a bat or a ball since I got home from the World Cup so it's really frustrating as well um, not being able to to work on my skills but like I said at the end of the day there's nothing we can do about it um, we have to stay strong throughout this whole phase that we're going through and but I think you can really work hard on your fitness and, and improve on that and I guess when the lockdown's over, it's it's time to get in the net again. Yeah. So let's go a little bit into your story and your journey. Um, it's quite tricky for women in, in, in sport, especially cricket, to, to get introduced to the sport in a way that is fluent and easy. Um, how did you get into it? We've, I've heard stories from, like, for example, Dani Fenikek um, chatted to me once and spoke to me about how she learned from her brothers and played with her brothers. And she had fortunate enough to have siblings to play cricket with. And then you play with the boys. But what was your journey like? Um, how did you start and how were you introduced to cricket? Well, I was also lucky enough to have a brother. Um, <laughs> I have a brother that's two years older than me and we stayed on a farm. So we had a massive backyard. Um, we used to play the whole school holidays um, from early in the morning until it, it got dark at night. Um, and my dad just once, when I was 11 years old, and my dad said, why don't you just go for trials just to, just to see? Maybe you like it, maybe you make the team. And uh, I went for trials at Northerns. And um, yeah. at the age of 11, I got selected to play for the under-13s. And since then, I pretty much played cricket. That was I loved it since then. Um, I was a lot into athletics. So... At 20 or in 2017, I actually decided for the first time that um, when I got selected for the Pro Tiers, the first time that I actually want to play cricket for a career. Um, so I left all the other sports I played and and then I just went into cricket um, full time. So living on a farm, what is, what is that like? I mean, that's been interesting. Um, what sort of animals, etc., or is it strictly just um, other type of farming? Um, well, we didn't we didn't have really we didn't farm. Um, we stayed on a farm, but uh, we had goats and stuff, but just for the fun um, because my dad, both my mom and dad, worked. But um, I think it was the best time of my life. We stayed there for I, I think like thirteen years, and 
Um, that's basically where my career started. If it wasn't for that, I don't think I would have played cricket. Um, mm. So, like I said, I was lucky enough to have all the brother and he always tried to bowl as quick as he can and um, yeah. try to get me out as many times as he can. And um, he always liked to just give me a go. Um, and I think that is a, a big part of um, why I'm here today is uh, all the fun we had in the backyard. And I got such a big love for the game, just playing backyard mm. cricket. And when I first started my career at 11, um, it was a real pleasure and fun for me just, just to be part of the game. Do you think if you had to face him now, you'll have the edge of him? I definitely <laughs> think so. I definitely <laughs> think so. <laughs> uh, so so their brother out, uh, fun. He was more the batsman um, and I turned out more the bowler and throughout my career that changed a little bit into batting, bowling. Um, but I was when I started, I was only a, a bowler and, and he was only the batter. So when we played backyard cricket, he always batted first. And I always bowled first and I had to bowl two, three hours just to get him out. And then he got me out first, second ball <laughs> every time. So this brother, what, what's your brother's name? Reinhard. Reinhard, Dave, we've got a challenge for you. You need to come down eh, and come face your sister once again. <laughs> uh, so um, when did you decide to move to, to Cape Town and playing for Western Park, etc.? Um, we've had it in our minds for a really long time um, because we stayed on a farm in Pretoria. Uh, my dad and them wanted to move here. Um, so I was unfortunate to have to come with my parents. Uh, I loved playing for Northerns. That was my family and um, I had a really good relationship with my teammates there and I've been there for a really long time. So it was really difficult to leave them um, to come to a new province and stuff. But uh, we moved last year in November um, and I think it was it was a really good move. I'm really happy with Western Province. I have a brilliant coach and, and, and good teammates. So, um, yeah, it's really good to be here. Um, I love Cape Town. Um, so, and I think it's been really good for my cricket as well. Healthy competition, new teammates, new positions. I have to fit in differently um, than, on, than on what I was used to at Northerns. Um, and I think that's really good for my cricket as well and especially for my career going forward. Yeah, I'm um, speaking to Claire. I've, I've spoken to Claire quite a bit, and she's always spoken about you and and said um, spoke highly of you. And I've always was like, yes, so, so I just want to see you play and see you in action, etc. I got that opportunity um, again on live TV to watch you play in that semi final. That semi final to me was really heartbreaking. And you go, but you, but you girls really made us very proud. I mean, I stood at the TV. I was when you took those those wickets. I was. Like literally, I was. I remember I was at Western Province Cricket Club, <laughs> and with a couple of guys, and um, there was a a province warm up game happening at the time, and and I was sitting upstairs just watching this game, and I was you you brought a lot of excitement. I thought you guys had the edge over there. Um, I think if the rain didn't come in, you guys would have won that match. That's me personally. This is an opinion, but um, just talk me through that World Cup and that experience playing with the Proteas. I mean, obviously, I would assume that you looked up to um, people like Marazan Cup and who's also an all rounder, bowling all rounder, and um, someone like Tane Fenikek, of course, etc. So, just speak to me what was it like to be part of that Proteas camp? It was really good. Um, I think for me to come back, obviously I didn't get, get selected for the for the 2018 World Cup. So for me to to get back with the team and and be part of a World Cup, and I I felt um, from the start that we have a really good chance. I, I felt mm -hmm. like this was the year for us, and and we had a really good and strong and fit team. Um, obviously, brilliantly led by Danae, and um, it was unfortunate we, we couldn't get over the line again, and and it's heartbreaking that we just can't get over the line with the semi-finals. But um, to get an opportunity to play in the semi-final, obviously, um, to replace Kapi, it's, it, it's a massive role to play. And, and she's been brilliant to the team for many, many years. And it's never going to be easy to, to fill a spot. But um, to get the opportunity and, and to contribute to the team is really special. And it's, it's definitely the highlight of my career and mm. um, hopefully the start of good things. But um, mm. I do think we missed her dearly in that game. And, and I think with the rain as well, didn't quite go as we wanted mm. to. But... Again, it's something we can't control. Um, the rain is something that, that's totally out of our control and it, it just didn't yeah. work out. So I guess it was not the time for us. Yeah. Let's talk about more of the positives. I don't really want to dwell on the fact that that happened. I just want to talk about the positives. Um, talk to me about Marazan and, and how she's been with you, what sort of what you've learned from her, etc. Because obviously you would look up to her. I know she's quite intense on the field. Is she like that off the field too? <laughs> She's no, she's 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 actually um, 
she can be really funny if she wants to but uh look she's she's a she's a real competitor um that's one thing i know about her and i know um i remember her face when uh, when she couldn't play in the semi-final and my heart broke there and then for her because i know what what an impact player she is for south africa and she's she's been for the past 10 years or eight years um so to lose her in a semi-final and and, and the devastation on her face i know it's, it's really tough um but she's brilliant. I mean, if if there's one player in my team that I can probably look up to the most, it's her. Um, I know starting off at this young age and, and looking up to her, that's exactly where I want to go. I mean, she's also all around us. So obviously, she's the perfect example for me to follow. And she's just been so brilliant. And I, f I, f I feel so sorry for her for the World Cup because she's, she's been in really good form. I felt she played really well in the New Zealand series and, and the couple of games she played in the World Cup, she was in really good nick. Um, and I think if, if we had her in that semi-final, I think it might have been a little bit different for us. But um, as long as she's recovered now and, and hopefully um, when we get back on the park, we'll have her on, on the field again. And let's talk a little bit more about Western Province. I see um, Claire is very much loved by all the girls in that team. And um, I've seen the impact that she's had on a lot of players' careers from a young... And it's a very young bunch of, of a squad. Um, you guys, you have guys like um, you have someone like Andy Klobera there, who's, who's an up-and-coming star. You've got yourself, who's all still still quite young. Um, just talk to me about that and how how much she's helped your career, taking it to the next level. I think it's it's really important um, the way she goes about things. I felt like when I got here, it was just so much different. The way the positiveness that she brings to the team, and I, I feel to my personal game as well. I remember going to her for sessions and, and she's always just positive. There's never yeah. something negative to say. Even if it's a really bad shot, she will always say something positive about the one bad shot you play. And um, she will make you feel good about yourself. And I think that's really something um, that almost gave me a little bit of fire is to, <laughs> to be better because she's really, she's so positive. And I've, ne I've never met a coach in my career that's that positive and, and never... <laughs> And never being, and that's really for me that's special because I'm I'm a player like that. I need something positive. I need some good information to get me going. And I felt yeah, at Western Province, that's really what I got. Um, not only from her, but from my teammates as well. And uh, she's been brilliant. I love working with her, even though she throws a lot of short balls. Um, she's been really good, and and she helped my career a lot in this short space. I've only been here six months, but um. I can already already feel that I've improved a lot, not only with my batting, but bowling, fielding, um, and it's it's a real pleasure to play for Western Province. Yeah, um, I think Claire is just like that in general, that's as a human being, because I mean, I speak to a lot of the field and we have chats and when I'm bothered about something, I normally come to her and ask for her advice and she's always positive. And I mean, I messaged her before our interview and I told her, I don't know if she wants me to say this, but I told her, um, yeah, I'm quite nervous about this one. It's just, and, and she's like, no, don't worry about it. Don't, just be yourself, you know. Um, she's like, no, you've already... I said, I, it's why I'm, she asked me why I'm nervous. And I said, no, it's because it's my first project. But she said, and I said, I didn't count Zubair because we, me and him talk a lot. So I'm used to talking to him. She's like, well, it counts as a project. So don't worry. It, to, keep me, <laughs> to keep me positive like that, I mean, in every single walk of life, she's an amazing person. Um, no, she's really so, good. Yeah, so going forward in your career right now, um, I want to talk a little bit more about the women's game in general and how it's how it's growing because it's it's phenomenal how it's growing. I, I really enjoy watching women's cricket. Um, any time chance that I do get free that I can watch, I try to watch. I'm, I'm still need to support the um, the local team here more and go to more of the games. It's always clashing with other with other uh, cricket. And for me as a journalist, it's quite difficult to cover everything. But talk to me about the women's game and how it's growing and, and what inspires you the most about, about the game at the moment. Um, obviously, I've only been in the setup for, for about three, three or four years now. So, But I spoke a lot to, to Mignon and them and they said that the young the youngies coming in now are so privileged because when they started, there was nothing. Um, they played for fun. Um, but yeah. when I remember when I went to the first World Cup in 2017 and, and when we did so well and we came back, a lot of things happened. Um, for the women's game and, and I know there was a lot of improvement in contracts and all of that um, so I think it's really heading in the right direction I think all the, the Super League that we have now and, and just a little bit more to get women's cricket involved um, mm -hmm. the exposure that we're getting I think it's it's still not there yet but I think um, there's really a lot of improvements and I'm excited for the future I think there's a bright future for women's cricket um, 
in the near future and 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 hopefully as south africans we can we can really fire that up yeah so guys you guys can comment in the comment section uh know whether you're watching it on youtube whether you're watching it on facebook put your comments in we're going to have a section at the end of the show where we ask that in your questions so anything that you want to ask just get them in so you you spoke about that and about women's cricket obviously evolving and et cetera, et cetera. Um, as a youngster, um, I mean, it's quite tricky because you've now experienced some some international cricket quite quickly, quickly and you've got younger guys playing in, your, in the Western Province team now. How do you manage, how do you aim to help them um, actually aspire to their dreams and their goals? Uh, in what way? Are you a person that tries to show by lead by example or you're more of a person that tries to teach like specific mental methods or things of coping mechanisms? I think for me it's 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 really leading from the front um because i guess it's easy to talk a lot it's easy to to tell them all of these things but if you can't do it yourself then then what's the point of it so i'm a really strong believer of leading by example and i, I feel that that's why i look up to to marizan cup the way i do is she always leads by example um and i feel that's really important even if it's fitness if it's fielding batting bowling it doesn't matter what aspect of the game is if you lead by example um the youngsters will try to follow in your mm -hmm. footsteps and and at the end of the day if you work hard the results will come and then the youngsters will see the results and that's what they will they will want to work for that because at the end of the day there's results um but i feel talking is a lot easier i'm not a big fan of only talking um so i'm i'm really i'm really that type of person of, of leading by example and and i hope i do that in south africa even if it's in, in small ways is to inspire young younger players than me i'm obviously still young but younger players the under 19 players or the girls coming after me and and, and the young ones really is, is is to work hard and and to look up to to us as the national players at this moment and because we need the young ones obviously there's there's a next batch of players that needs to play in the in the world cups coming up in the in the future so hopefully we as a team can lead by example not only me but but from the from our captain danae until the youngest in the team to me and and lava and and we can set the example for the young ones let's let's go through a little bit about uh, through your training regime etc when when the season's on again um being an all-rounder is quite a tricky um what can i say role in the side because obviously you have to practice your bowling and your batting, batting equally to fit in both because i mean some guys even struggle to just fit in their own schedules and just i'm talking about now just doing their bowling or just doing the batting how do you balance the both and be able to what's your training regime like during the season i think that's something in my career that i'll have to figure out quite soon um obviously at, at provincial level it was it was okay it was it wasn't as hard to to balance it because i had enough time but at the moment i'm trying whenever i go to training sessions i try to do both um as best as i can but i feel i do kind of feel that there's always one of the two that's getting a little bit more attention and 90 percent of the time it's my batting um although i perform better with the ball but um it's really it's a difficult task it's, it's really it's like multitasking it's like yeah. writing exams while i don't know watching tv um and it can it it can become really difficult at times um especially on tour i feel it gets me a little bit on tour because there's not always enough time for me to do both um, and, and when you're long tours, it really affects me. But um, I guess when you have the time, concentrate on both because it's it's really special being an all-rounder. And, and um, I showed it to myself at the World Cup that even if I'm not performing with the bat, I can always make a contribution with the ball. Um, and that's I think it's a really special skill to have um, to, to be able to contribute with, with bat and ball. Some, some bowlers would put a marker down, you'll hear them put the marker down in this bowl on that spot. As a fast bowler, maybe to a younger generation, maybe people that are youngsters that are about eight, under 10, maybe starting into cricket. What sort of uh, tips can you give them to just practice their bowling? Whether they go to their regional, their normal school programs or if they are playing for the province? For me personally, um, when I train bowling, is I love target bowling. I feel that's the best way to train. And, and after that, I usually bowl to the, to the batters because um, they can do funny things as well. They can move around and hit that good ball still for six. So I love doing half an hour or let's say five five overs of, of target bowling and then actually bowling to batters. Um, but I know at a young age that is a bit tricky. But I feel to set the base up when you're a little bit younger, doing I know when I was like 11 years old, I did a lot of stationary bowling. 
just mm-hmm. to get the technique right and all of that. And then you slowly, you slowly progress from there. And then it's just your three steps and then your five steps and until you eventually get to your, to your full run up. And um, if you can hit that, I mean, I don't know how many bowlers can do that, but I, I still can't hit three out of six balls on the cone. Um, so I think if, if you have a skill like that and you're really consistent with that, um, especially starting from a young age, it's, it's a really good skill to have. Cool. So lockdown, not only about cricket and practicing cricket, etc. You will get some time to, to kill. Uh, what what do you do in your in your spare time, etc.? Um, are you a Netflix girl? Or do you like to do you, do you do some gaming? Maybe I know a lot of the guys like to play FIFA, etc. Or what do you like to do in your spare time? Well, funny enough, I'm sleeping a lot of the times, but um, <laughs> we have a little schedule of our own going. So I have a little sister that's eight years old, and mm-hmm. I have a brother that's twenty one. So all we're doing is we play PlayStation or games until four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> then we go to bed at half past four and we wake up at two o'clock every afternoon. And then we eat and we go on and then I train. Maybe at four o'clock I, tra- I finish my training sessions. I go take a shower and then we start with our game nights again. And that's what we've been doing <laughs> for the past, I don't know, eight days. So that is our own schedule that we created. Um, so I guess it's a bit of sibling time. I love getting to spend some time with, with my brother and sister and, and my parents as well. So um, <laughs> it's really good. It's a lot of fun. So what type of games do you play? Are you into online gaming? Um, my brother is a big fan of anything that in, involves shooting. So okay. any shooting game, that is what we're playing. Um, and my sister as well. So we're playing a lot of um, shooting games, Call of Duty and Black Ops. And I don't know all the names. And um, yeah. my brother likes to take me on for a contest in FIFA. Okay, but he always cool. beats me, unfortunately, because um, I'm not a big gaming fan, but he always beats me with that. Um, and we play a little bit of golf. Um, so we, we love yeah. we love the challenge. You know, brother and sister, yeah. the, the one always wants to be better than the other one. So we have a little bit of a challenge going for the 21 days. Yeah, there's actually a new Call of Duty game that I can't believe I'm promoting them. I'm a sponsor and pay for this video, actually. But the, look, at the, the, <laughs> there's a new game coming that this came out by Call of Duty called um, Warzone. It's a free game that you can download. It's very similar to Fortnite. I just got on it about two days ago. It is quite a big download, though. Um, I think it's about 100 gigs to download the game itself. But <laughs> it's really fun. <laughs> it's really fun and, and something maybe that you can think of, of getting into. You must maybe tell him about it. We we also plan to play in the evening, um, get on those games and try to play that. Are you also, yeah, I'm sure you love it. Yeah, you probably will. Um, are you into other sports besides cricket? Um, do you actually have time to sit back and watch other sports? To be honest, I'm not a I'm not a big fan. I used to be into athletics and I love hockey, um, but at the moment I I don't really feel for any other sports. Um, I'm very much into the cricket, but now that we're under lockdown, is I try to stay. I actually, I try to stay away from from cricket a little bit, and and also actually any other sports so at the moment I'm, I'm really either watching movies or or spending time with my family then then trying to watch sports so that is um it's good for me to just take a little bit of a break so you're not a person that likes to watch the Premier league or watch the rugby etc i don't know no. unfortunately not no i used <laughs> to be a big rugby fan um but no at the moment if i don't watch cricket then i don't watch any sports at all Awesome. So if you had to, that's probably a tricky, tricky question to ask. Um, supporting wise on TV, you obviously there's a big, the big women leagues around the world. There's a big bash, etc. Uh, from a, from a male team perspective, in, uh, do you watch the IPL at all? Are there any teams yes. that you support? Big, or would you support? Uh, the, I'm a I'm a big Jack Ellis fan. So the mm-hmm. Kolkata Knight Riders has been my team for. I don't know, since he started playing for them. And yeah. even though he was just the coach, I'm still supporting uh, KKR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty that there's, there's no competition. Uh, the IPL is amazing. It's uh, what a competition that is. And obviously, our global T20 is getting there. I think it will be there in a few years' time. I think we'll get to a level where people want to play in this country. We hear uh, really guys like Darwin Milan and obviously Owen Morgan talking about the standard of cricket in South Africa. So, uh, really... I'm happy about that. Uh, so you said you're a big Jack Ellis fan, always since you've always been growing up. Since since I started playing, that was if he played Big Bash two o'clock in the morning, I would wake up and watch him play. And uh, 
I almost cried when he retired. So <laughs> I'm a massive John Carlos fan. Um, he's been brilliant throughout the years. And, and yeah, yes, I love watching him play. Yeah. So anybody, like normally people have sports heroes. So you, I don't know, you probably be more, you seem like a person that is very involved in cricket and you in obviously feel like you can immerse yourself in the game and that's how you obviously get your inspiration that comes across like that to me when i'm talking to you but yeah. do you have any other sport out of you because you don't watch any other sporting heroes so um with regards to other heroes maybe musicians or actors or so things like that that you look up to or people that you look up to not at all um i'm like i said i'm i'm, I'm a cricket fanatic um so yeah i don't i don't really there's there's a lot of there's a lot of actors that are that i enjoy watching and, and and musicians i love music um that is really one thing that we do all the time my parents always complain because the music's always loud um but we love like all three of us we love music um but there's not really someone i look up to um apart from my cricketing heroes i have quite a few um some of them cool. still playing some of them retired quentin de Kock, definitely one um ab de villiers ben stokes Josh Butler. Um, so I have quite a few that I really look up to, but apart from cricketing heroes, uh, not really going much on. <laughs> uh, how many of them did you get to meet? Um, um, not actually anyone. I met Abby de Villiers way back when I was a little girl because my cousin played with him. Um, and then Quentin de Kock, I took a picture with him once, and Faf, I took a picture with, oh, and Jar Colors. But um, yeah, that's that's about it. Now, come on, guys, you've heard it. Uh, Quinny, get on board. Come on, guys, like, listen, Jock, out there, all of you. So, today, you can be a very good boy. You deserve it. <laughs> so, get on board if you are watching it. Um, so, yeah, so with regards to movies, you said you're a big movie fan. Are you, do you, do you watch a lot of movies? What is some of the movies, your favorite movies of all time, maybe? Um, yeah, I have, I have to remember the names, but, um, I'm a very big romantic comedy fan. Uh, I love the romance movies uh, for some reason, but um, if I can just think of the top of my head now, Pearl Harbor is definitely one. Um, Save Haven, uh, The Lucky One, The Notebook. So all the smooth, <laughs> smooth movies. Um, that's the ones that I enjoy watching. <laughs> You're probably gonna grab me through the screen and choke me when I say I didn't enjoy The Notebook much. Um, I. No. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed um, A Walk to Remember. That's one of my favorite chick flicks, if you can call it that. A Walk yeah, to Remember. Yeah, that was a good movie. I remember that one. Yeah, so I've also obviously dabbled into the romantic comics. I watch everything, so that's my excuse for watching romantic <laughs> comics. I'm a film, I feel I'm a film lover and a film fanatic as well. I watch all sorts of types of movies, so that's the reason why I watched uh, I Walked in Him because I had to. Um, <laughs> and there's, there's some other cool ones that I like, really like, definitely, maybe. I don't know if you watched that with Ryan Reynolds. Oh, no, um, I haven't watched that one before. Yeah, and just maybe take a look at that one. So <laughs> that's, that's a really good one. Going into some of the questions, Glennis the Blanche has a good view, maybe. Do you enjoy facing the side arm? Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. Why <laughs> so? I don't know. I've never been a fan of that thing. And I don't think ever in my career I will be. Um, but uh, I guess I have to get used to it. <laughs> so we've got Emily Norris over here that's also asked the question, who is your favorite female cricketer currently and why? And who was your... Okay, she already answered who is a cricket inspiration growing up. But you can answer it again for, for Emily that just joined us. Okay, um, I'll have to go with, with Marizan Cup. Um, even though she's my own teammate, is I really look up to her and I have a lot of respect for her. Um, I really do. And, and I think she's she's leading from the front brilliantly and um, I, I would want to be like her. And then um, my cricket inspiration is, is Jacques Alice, as I said. Is, um, and that's obviously the all-rounders that are that I inspired to be like. So um, yeah, that's my two favorite cricketers. Okay, cool. So let's dive off. I can see I'm, you're holding up your phone to your arm, your bone. I don't want to injure you in the floor, okay? So, <laughs> so let's just end off by just a little words of wisdom or words of 
thanks to the Cricket Fanatics fans that have supported you and asked me to do this interview. Um, can you just maybe give a message to them and the young cricketers out there that look up to you? I think, um, I know it's a, it's a difficult time, but I just want to tell everyone, um, especially the cricketers and, and, and the young ones, is um, take this time to work on things you need you need to. Um, even if, if it's your fitness, if it's your weight, um, if it's getting away from the game, for me that's, that's really working, is to get away from the game and spending some time with the family. Um, but don't get lazy. Don't do nothing. Um, still keep working hard. And, and there's obviously there's a lot of opportunities and there's a bright future for women's cricket. You can make a career out of it. Um, so don't think there's not a chance or there's no opportunities. Um, yeah, but there's really there's a there's a big future for women's cricket and keep working hard. It's it's for me it's a dream. It's a dream came true. Um, it's something that I I love this game. I love playing for South Africa. Every time I put that jersey over my head, I still get goosebumps every time. It never gets old. Um, so let that inspire you. And um, it's it's a brilliant game to play. Thank you, Nadine. That's an awesome conversation with you. I hope we can get uh, another one down the line. Guys that are watching. Thank you very much for watching and tuning in. We're going to be doing this every single day until I think you guys get bored of it, but we're going to try to get as many people on the show. <laughs> um, tom tomorrow, we've got, we're going to try to get Kyle Verena, Cobra's player, on as well to have a chat with him. Guys, press the notification bell if you are watching on, on YouTube, of course, so you can get the updates and when this is going to stream. So thank you, Nadine. Awesome conversation. Good luck through all the lockdown and keep, have your family stay safe and healthy, please. Thank you so much and, and be safe. Enjoy the time at home. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you.